So let's have a look at some more examples of things we can do with uh, our new functionality. Just listing files is a bit dull, so let's see what else we can do. We can also uh, open each file and do some processing, so you could even apply your spell checker and uh, spell check all the contents, uh, all the text files, for example. Um, but what we're going to do is something a little bit simple. We're going to count the number of lines in the file, uh, and we can do uh, a text analysis, or we could search for a word in all the relevant files. So let's have a look at some of those things. We're going to do one and three, in fact. We'll, we'll count the number of lines in the file. We won't do the text analysis, although we've seen how to do that in the last week's lecture. And we'll search for a word in all relevant files. So um, how do we count the lines? Well, here's uh, a different version of the function. So we had index and uh, print, index and list, sorry, was the last one. Index and count lines. This is another recursive function. OK. What does it do? It uh, it reads in, or it uses it, it files finds the file names in the the uh, current directory. Okay, um, and for each file name, it prints out the file name. So there you can see. It. Sorry, it's uh, it gets the path of the file name rather. Uh, if it's a directory, then it goes down into the uh, into the the directory just like the other one. So it recurses into the directory if it finds a directory. If it Otherwise, if it's a Python file, it reads the lines in the file uh, and it counts the the number of lines that aren't empty. So we could, this is a list of lines in the file. This uses the, um, the function read lines, which is this here, which is a slightly different version of our read line, of our read function. So the read function, if you remember, earlier on in the lecture, we gave it a file name and it read in, opened and read the, the contents of the file into a single string. Here's another version of that uh, that uses file.readline. So that's a function provided for us by, uh, by Python. And rather than reading the entire contents of the file into a string, it reads the file into a separate lines. OK, so what do we do to process that file? Uh, we could just, we could just, this is a list of lines, OK? So we could just print out the number of lines in the file. Um, or what we do here is we count the lines that aren't empty. So this is, which is a slightly different, but perhaps more useful thing to do. So some of these files could have lots and lots of blank lines, which are, are sort of aren't really useful or don't tell us much about the file. So this one just counts. It looks at all the lines and it looks at the length of the line after you've stripped off any um, space from the beginning or end. Okay, And if the length is bigger than zero, then it adds it to the count. So it's only counting lines where there's some content in that line that isn't just white space. And then it prints out the count uh, of each line and the name, sorry, the path of that file. OK, so uh, as we saw, there's the new variant of the read function. And this only opens Python files, and it doesn't count blank lines. Let's just run that. So here it is. Um, and this one also, uh, rather than asking the user for the uh, for which directory they want to work in, it just works in the parent directory of the, the folder it's working in. So this is going to go through all my Python files, all these files that I've got here, and count them. And there you can see it's working its way through, reading each file. You see how fast it is, reading each file and printing out the, the number of uh, non-empty lines. So going back to this particular lecture we're looking at, there's the files lecture, you can see that uh, the file reader had eight non-empty lines and the file, the read function had 11 and the spell checker, the initial spell checker has 20, 17 and the next spell checker has 21 lines in the file that aren't empty. So that's a very you know fast way of getting information about how many lines of code you've got, should you want to do that. Um, as I mentioned, it's got this new function called read lines, which returns the lines of the file in the list. That's really uh, useful. Uh, it's, you could do that yourself by reading the file as a string and splitting it at each new line character, but this one this uh, does it for you. And as I said, it only counts non-empty lines to try and measure how much actual real working code there is. You could also strip out comments. There's lots of processing you could do. This is just a, an example. Okay. Uh, 
perhaps a more useful one is uh, the search. Now you can just to say you can do a search in um, in PyCharm, and you don't so you don't need this, but it's quite a it's quite good to be able to do it yourself. So it's a, a simple text uh, search which searches through Python files looking for a particular string. Okay, so again, this uh, this uses one of these loops that runs continuously until the, the, the user puts nothing in. So it asks the user for a search string. And it's case sensitive, so uh, it does take account of whether it's upper or lower case. And if the user puts uh, just hits return, doesn't put anything, so if the search string is empty, then it breaks out of this loop. And then it looks at it goes into the, uh, the parent folder. So again, if you've got all your files organized like this in in a single project, this is going to be able to search through all of them. Okay, because it will just go up to the parent folder, the, the main project folder and uh, search through all of them and then it uses index and search which is another version of the uh, the same recursive function essentially which lists all the file names uh, loops through them if they're if they're a directory or a folder then it drops down into that folder and searches through those uh, and if it ends with a dot py then it reads in that um, uh, that the contents of that file so line, this line here, reads in the path, reads in the contents of that file, and it counts, it uses that uh, Python function count that we saw last week to count how many times the search string occurs in that file. And if, if it's more than zero, if there are more than uh, zero of them, then it prints out uh, the, the number of occurrences and the name of the file. So let's uh, run that one. So I know we've used the word hello quite a lot, haven't we? Let's just uh, try hello. And that there you can see there's the the files where the word hello appears. OK, so you can imagine quite early on we used it quite a lot. Um, so it occurs once in the Hello World program. Um, in the first lecture, in lecture two, it's in Hello World, Hello Name, Hello Name, Welcome. But let's run it. If I that's loop, that loop is still running, by the way. If I if I now put in another thing where I put in hello, which is with no low, with a lowercase h, it only occurs once. Okay, in one of the string examples, so it's it's looking through our files and it's looking uh, in a case sensitive way <coughs> to find, try and find a string in all of those Python files. So that's quite a useful uh, little bit of functionality. Although, as I said, you can do that in PyCharm. Okay, <coughs> and there's a there's an example of it running. Um, something else we need to know about is, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, what's often known as CRUD functionality. So, uh, create, read, update, and delete, um, and you can do all that with the this um, OS and the open uh, function. So we, we've seen um, we've seen open to read. Uh, and we can also use open to create. So if you use the X mode, um, then you can create a file or W mode to write a file. Uh, to read, you can use um, open in R mode. Update, you can use open in W mode to overwrite or A to append um, to that file. And if you want to use, if you want to delete a file, then you have to use the OS um, remove function, which will delete the file name. So um, I'd say in general, you can only easily modify text files. Uh, you can't do this with Word documents. So you can't append stuff at the end of a Word document because it's just a Word document is, is uh, full of uh, control codes. So it's a binary format. You need more specialized techniques. You can, <coughs> it is possible in Python, but uh, not with the techniques we're going to learn in this um, lecture. So let's see an example of that. Oh, yes, by the way, there's a w3 schools page to look at about that uh, and about the file remove to delete files and let's see an example so this <coughs> example um it's a very simple program but it's it actually creates uh writes um updates and deletes a, a, a file called demo.txt so let's just run through it quickly so we open the file in write mode and then we write a string into that file which just says hello world and then we close it 
uh, and then to check what's happening, uh, we're printing out the name of the file and we're printing out what the contents of the file are. So just to check, um, those two lines will then check that file and print out the contents of that file, which as you'd expect is hello world. And then we ask, well, then we put this press return to continue just so it doesn't just carry on and delete everything. Um, then we open the file in append mode and write the words hello again. So you can see when I print that out, it prints out the contents of the file is now hello world, hello again. Uh, press return to continue just to make sure it doesn't go on and uh, finish before, we, before we're ready for it. And then finally, so that we've, we've created a file, we've read from it, we've written to it, and uh, to delete it, then uh, we just use the os.remove and that deletes the demo. So if I run that code, uh, there's the, the uh, hello world. I can also actually look at the file, which is created inside the, should be created inside the folder. So we're looking at the folder. There it, there it is. It should be here, but um, yeah, it takes a, a few seconds to ten seconds for PyCharm to catch up with files that are written to the, the, the folder. So there it's appeared now. And there it is. Hello world. Okay. As soon as I hit return, it then appends some text onto it, and this eventually will get updated. Uh, and then. Hit return again. Oh, there it was, got updated, and then it gets deleted. And now, when PyCharm catches up, it should disappear. If I go to the folder, it's no longer there. Okay, so that, uh, I think the main focus of this lecture is really about reading contents of files. But as you can see, it's quite easy to, um, to write and update files and delete them as well. Okay, let's finish that. Uh, video there and then we'll talk about looking at CSV files in the last video.